ever since I started working with services, I've been wondering why are they so hard to analyze and specify? So what if we created a common visual language for service design? So <clears throat> let's, take another, let, let's take a look at another language that is, works across cultures and countries. So just relax, I won't ask you to sing it, but perhaps some of you who knows this language can see what it is. It's Penny Lane from the Beatles, and so apparently this works fine for music. So why not for service design? So this is my conference journey from the moment I decided to go until ordering tickets, traveling, and now experiencing this wonderful conference, and we will go home tomorrow. But it's not right that way. It's not expressive enough because there are many actors and there's many channels and the diagram soon becomes very complex. So we also have the front end problem and the theory versus practice problem. So I'll show you now a picture from a service design workshop. It was a professional this facilitator who guided us through two days with ice breaking, <laughs> quiz and brainstorming. And when finishing, this, the system architects asked, what now, what happens now? And the facilitator said, so let's have a brainstorm about that. And guess what happened? The, the nice atmosphere disappeared and the system developers almost attacked him physically. And this is, <laughs> this is one aspect of the fussy front end. So it was a battle between the creatives, peoples and the nerds. <clears throat> in the 80s, we learned that the services can exist in two states. It's a potential state and the kinetic state. So there's a hypothetical way of delivering the service, which is specified by the blueprint, and it's the kinetic state, which is the actual rendering of the service. So <clears throat> the intended service delivery, it can always be planned, and it can be blueprinted, and it can be modeled but the actual service delivery, it is very personal and it's context dependent and it changes in time. And emotions cannot be modeled. So how do we deal with those? Terminology in service design is quite vague and the two central terms, touch point and customer journeys, are interpreted in different ways. And these are just a few examples of synonyms that we compiled from the literature. So we are developing a framework where we define a touch point to be an instance of communication or interaction between a customer and a service provider. And a customer journey is a sequence of touch points and actions to achieve a certain goal. So not surprisingly, our touch points are visualized as circles and the initiator of the touch point is coded in the color of the boundary. And also the status of the touch point is coded in the boundary style, like if it's completed, if it's missing, or if it failed. So here are a few of our symbols. They represent the communication channel or the device being used by the customer. So we are currently testing the usefulness of these symbols, so we want them to be easy to understand. The diagram elements are beside the touch points are actions, and actions are distinct from touch points in that they involve no communication or interaction. They could be like a mental process, like taking a decision, or it could be some kind of an offline activity. And our touch points, or my, our journeys, customer journeys are chains of actions and touch points. So we see here uh, in um, expected journeys, they, there's often a decision point where the journey splits into sub journeys. And if the sequence cannot be predefined, we use those brackets. So we work with model services uh, and we work with annual case studies with our industry partners. And we develop um, use cases to, to capture subtleties in the journeys 
we play with them and we use them to develop the language. This is going to the movies. So the customer orders ticket, purchase it on, online. There are two confirmations sent and at the cinema, the customer goes to this machine to retrieve the ticket. So this is what we call the plain sequential view. Here's a, a real case study at sales process where the customer phones into the call center, receives information by mail, and salesperson contacts the customer right after. There are some emails going back and through, and in this case, the customer just changes his mind and there is no contract. Sometimes um, things happen simultaneously. So we developed a concurrency view. You can see here after one failing attempt, the customer phones the salesperson and while they are having their conversation, there are emails being sent back and forth with the contract and it is signed and returned. And finally, we have this deviation view for a transactional service where we split the visualization in a vertical and horizontal uh, below the horizontal line, you see the, the ad hoc or unexpected touch points. You see here a customer struggling with getting in contact. So this was a very short glimpse into the visual project. And we are lucky to work together with clever people from Halogen and the uh, University of Linköping. And of course, our industry partners. And this is a project sponsored by the Research Council of Norway.